Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Warm welcome to our seminar today, together with ASA Associates and the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce on liquidity management in during the Corona crisis. It is my privilege to welcome you. And I will have a short introduction of five minutes, after which our chamber president, Mr. Georg Graf, who is also the group CEO of Freudenberg, will introduce himself, introduce himself and the topic. And this will be followed by a presentation one is by Ajay Seti on the impact of COVID-19, then by Sandeep Kanna on sales forecasting, and finally by Sandeep Gupta on expense and treasury management. The COVID crisis is a unique crisis. Maybe it's the mother of all crises, and therefore it's been unpredicted and something that we have to address. Therefore, today we want to address one of the core challenges in the crisis management, which is liquidity management. Last Friday on the 10th of April, the group chairman of Tata Sons, Mr. M. Chanda Shekharan, gave an exclusive interview to the Economic Times where he gave out the mantra for the Tata group of companies, conserving cash for 2021 is our message to all group companies. And Tata, the Tata group is maybe a symbol for the Indian economy because all the industries are covered by the group. And so, when they know how to manage their cash, then this is a maybe example for all of India. So today we want to discuss with you how you can manage your cash. And on Thursday, the doyen of the Indian banking industry, Mr. Deepak Parekh, gave a webinar. And one of the core elements of this webinar was also cash management. Now, what we want to discuss with you today or present to you today is how in these difficult times one can manage its cash. And of course, you know, yesterday was Eastern and even today in Germany, it's still Eastern. And during Eastern, we have the Easter egg hunt, where we basically hunt for treasures. And I can guarantee you, in all your companies, and I understand more than 500 participants have signed up for this webinar, and I think more than 200 are online already, I can guarantee you, in each of your companies, you have hidden treasures. And today is the time, today is the must, to discover these treasures. Some of them may be very simple, cost-cutting measures that you wanted to do anyway, but never came around, never found the time to do it. But cost-cutting is only one element. Your stock management is another critical element. Of course, your debt management also. Your recoveries. So many things that one now can and has to look into. Because times, at least for the next couple of months, will not get better. Yesterday, you know, Prime Minister Modi had a talk with the chief ministers, and they were discussing when to open up. Now, this is the big question mark. There are some ideas how and when to open up, but today the chief minister Today, the chief ministers of the various states 
are coming up with ideas and it's been circulated also already how to restart some of the companies and when we see what happened in china this at the moment is the role model after two months lockdown in china slowly slowly it starts but also there it takes time the same will happen in india and if in india it takes two months like in china we are talking about end of may and when it then starts slow like in china we're talking about july and that's when the monsoon is there and that is when india has other challenges therefore it'll take time and this is why cash management is so absolutely critical for all of us and therefore we are now looking forward to some of the insights that asa and their experts are going to share with us without further ado i would like to hand over to Georg Graf, our chamber president and the group india ceo of freudenberg Georg, the floor is yours hello everyone good afternoon and welcome my name is Georg Graf. i'm in the office of the igc president 2019-20 and i am representing the German Freudenberg Group in India. IGCC is well known to you, so just a few words about Freudenberg. Freudenberg is one of these typical German hidden champions, a 171-year-old company in family hands, a global technology group. We are developing leading-edge technologies, excellent products and services for about 40 markets and for thousands of applications. Seals, vibration control components, technical textiles, filters, cleaning technologies and products, specialty chemicals and medical products, and a lot more. Almost 50,000 people in around 60 countries worldwide generate sales of almost 10 billion euro. In India, we are operating 16 production sites all over the country. So we got some good overview of what is happening here. If you receive nowadays emails from ASA, who will be starting the presentation in a few minutes, you will receive not only the typical with best regards. These days, you get additionally a uh, be safe, not scared. Under this kind of headline, be safe, not scared, I want to put today's webinar. We are all operating in a crisis mode these days. What does it mean? We receive wonderful academic phrases and even better and overloaded slides. I guess your inboxes are overfilled with it. However, it will not help us corporates too much to survive Corona. We know there is not only one measure out there in such a crisis. We have to look into all lines of our PNL. We should stop debating. We have to act. We have to focus on cash. Cash is king. It is a daily work and we have to revisit all initiated activities more often. In the best case, daily. We have to increase speed. This is what we actually also do in our Freudenberg group. We have increased the speed in getting information. Sales data, customer data, vendor data, bank balances. All these areas have to be revisited daily. And the data should be addressed to the decision maker. Most data still end at the data funeral ground. Wherever we can save money, we have to save immediately. Wherever we can create funds or cash, we have to create immediately. In the coming months, liquidity management will be the key to corporate survival. Today, we will dive into the major issues and tools that businesses need to focus on and control. It will help you to navigate through these uncertain times. And more important, you will be better prepared to take advantage of the recovery. To save costs, to improve working capital, to delay investments now, it is an easy task. Most of the businesses are surviving the downside, the downstream of a crisis, but not the upstream phase anymore. We have learned this in 2008, 2009. But Corona crisis has got an additional color. In a phase of operations coming back to normal, most probably not too soon, uncertainness increases and liquidity is needed 
and time to act and to the act is limited. Most businesses go a high risk in not surviving the revamping of operations after crisis. Before I hand uh, the mic to the speakers, let me give some very personal remarks to all of you. Our common platform is to do business, let me express it in such a way, is to do business in an Indo-German understanding of doing business. Our operations, based on the highest ethical standards, normally have a long-term perspective. Steve Leutenberg, 170 years of corporate history. I know that your operations, your business models are very diverse. You are associated with smaller or larger entities. You are German subsidiaries, joint ventures or Indian setups. Your economic solidity of your business is very differently. I know that all of you are fighting to survive with your entities the next day, the next week, the next month, the next quarter, the calendar year, the financial year. And all of you work under tremendous pressure from your headquarters or shareholders or owners. And you work under home office conditions and nobody is really used to it. And, and, and I could add so many more points. However, remember, our most important assets of our entities are not visible in our balance sheet. It is our employees. I know a lot of your entities are headcount intensive. However, I feel we as members of the IGCC, we have to take care on our people. Layoff of employees should be the last and ultimate activities you should decide to take up. Also, please remember your domestic helping hands at your homes. Remember your service providers, your small vendors, delivery boys, newspaper boys, and so on. Pay them down their money and salaries also during lockdown. Please pay in advance and take extra care. Play fair with them. They are in need now. They need your support now. Thank you. Enjoy the webinar and over to Ajay Seti. Finally, please. Thank you very much and a very good afternoon, Mr. Steinrook, Mr. Graf, Mr. Alad Sumit for putting this together. And thank you all of you attending the seminar. I'm really grateful that you have left your office desk to attend this seminar webinar, which we are putting together for you. I do want to thank my IT and business strategy team, which have been working remotely from different locations to put together this seminar. And that took a lot of good, hard teamwork. So thank you, Kim, and thank you, Manoj. Uh, before I begin, I just would like to mention that our, why did we come up with this idea and why did we want to build up on this? Uh, we have been in business for 30 years as a consulting and accounting firm, and we have garnered enough experience on what is the problem foreign companies primarily face in India. My prime clients are Japanese, German, French, American companies, British companies too. So we have understood where their prime pain points are. So the moment we started realizing that uh, this issue is going to cause a great amount of stress on uh, cash, we started discussing about this and that's what we come up with. And the speakers lined up after me are experts in their area. Sandeep Khanna is an expert on sales and marketing with tremendous years of experience behind him from Shell and TCS. Similarly, Sandeep Gupta, is an expert on treasury and cash and acts as a virtual CFO for many organizations. So that I thought I'd just give you a background where we're coming from so that you know what we are. Uh, could I go on to the next slide, please? So the game has changed. That is definitely thing. Let me put things in a proper direct manner. The GDP growth rate decline, it is imminent, it is there. The fall in disposable income and discretionary spending by people, imminent. The fall in aggregate demand in the country, imminent. Now this thing, if you take it together, one thing is clear. There is going to be capital expenditure cut by various companies, and some of them will be your clients. 
So you're talking about a situation when you have a shy or an invisible buyer. Second issue which is going to happen is supply chains are going to get badly disrupted. Getting your resources and then shipping out your goods both will become a challenge. Immediately, yes. In the long run, they're going to be log jams because it's going to be a lot of people moving things. The only silver lining, or let me put it like this as a Indian citizen, let me say my hope that India could possibly get out of the COVID situation a bit faster than many. And maybe the Indian manufacturing will gain in what could be some losses to Chinese manufacturing. We've already heard Americans talking about bailing packages for manufacturing companies to move out of China, and we've been hearing similarly from Japan. But like I said, this is hope, because it's not necessary everybody comes to India. I'm quite aware that many of the businesses will move from American sides to Mexico, Taiwan side, Vietnam side. So anyway, let's see how it moves forward. Next slide, please. So definitely business is not as usual anymore. None of us are sitting in that comfort of uh, deciding which consultant to change, which supplier to change, which kind of uh, uh, companies to deal with, what buyer to deal with. We are dealing with cash now. We have assumed two scenarios, that there is an effective cure, which is found within three months and is greater than three months. We try to take a kind of a logical leap into it. It really doesn't matter if the cure is less than or greater than three months, because government of India and other governments will, after a point of time, have to start opening up the economy maybe with some checks and balances in place. So even if the cure is going to be longer, the markets will open up, but the things will be far slower. So one thing is for sure, the financial year has been reduced down to nine months, and the supply chains will really start around 1st of July. Take it as a base assumption. One thing from this point becomes clear, the recession is imminent. Anybody who gives you a feeling that life will be back to normal, don't worry too much. I would tell you to take it with a pinch of salt. And therefore, planning your, let's say, cash war room for the next six months is a critical aspect. Economic recovery, I also tell you, will take 18 to 24 months. But cash will be king now. Next slide, please. So therefore, we have this devised a five-pronged strategy specifically aimed at companies which are operating in India, which are basically from the S and small and medium enterprise segment. Now this first critical element of the entire thing is sales forecasting. That's the critical element. Because if you get it wrong, you overestimate, you're still in trouble. You underestimate, you're still in trouble. Of course, it's very difficult to get it right. And that's why we have an expert to speak about this. Then we have two direct hits on the uh, cash side. One is working capital management. That's the second cycle we are going to talk about. Then we're going to talk treasury management. There are a lot of hidden treasures, as was mentioned a little while back by Mr. Steinbrook, that there are hidden treasures. I can assure you, you will find these some of these hidden treasures here. Besides, of course, your own entrepreneurial skills will help you discover some. Digital vision is very critical in this moment of time. And I would urge you to have a two years vision developed if already not in place. And then government policy. Fourth and fifth cycle, given the paucity of time, we'll spend a little less time out there. Next slide, please. So without further ado, I'm going to ask my colleague, Mr. Sandeep Khanna, to speak on from his experience. But do note, he is a marketing strategist with an expertise in sales and distribution. That's his expertise. And he helps our clients in building India entry strategy, not from a regulatory, from a market entry point of view, helping them improve performance and re-strategizing their operations in India. So he really is a domain expert. Over to you, Sandeep. Thank you, Ajay, and um, hello, everyone. Could you just move the slide, please? Thank you. Um, I'm going to focus on sales forecasting today. 
uh, and really and really uh, make three key points on sales forecasting in times of a crisis like the present one where commerce has collapsed like never before in living history firstly sales forecasting will very clearly be sector specific i think that is self intuitive so if your business is in the safe zone so uh, the, in the green box for example on the slide healthcare pharma telecom etc the approach to sales forecasting uh, in fact to business management will be quite different as compared to companies which are in the red box and which are badly impacted so for the red box companies sales forecasting i dare say will almost be a non issue it's all about survival for them how do they get funds to pay for their committed costs if you are an airline or a general merchandise retailer you know or any of the sectors which are uh, correlated closely with disposable income and discretionary spending you are really looking at some drastic measures second point is that uh, as ajay mentioned the financial year is reduced to 9 months that is our working assumption and by the time the full supply and distribution chain cranks up it may well be less than 9 months now in terms of sales forecasting what that means is that this reduced uh, financial year needs to be reflected in your sales forecast in other words whatever sales forecast is arrived at one of the questions that will be posed to the sales manager is that what is his or her level of confidence that the world will return to normalcy or a semblance of normalcy within 3 months therefore sales forecast will have to overlay the probability of when an effective cure read effective cure as a proxy for normalcy when an effective cure will be found for the pandemic so if let's say you are in a consumer electronics business forecasting a sale of 50000 units in the financial year with a level of confidence of a cure being found in let's say which is 80% then your sales forecast will have to be suitably modified downwards to reflect that we have just taken two simple scenarios uh, but of course those who are involved in this activity sales forecasting uh, might want to consider more scenarios as well finally and and that's really the meat of what i wanted to share with you are some personal experiences and and suggestions the top line is that the if your sales forecast is showing your business not covering its fixed costs you will need to take decisive steps to address your fixed cost structure and perhaps even business model i'm sure everyone recognizes that new costs post lockdown will emerge for instance plants and offices will be reconfigured for social distancing therefore here are a few recommendations please start talking to your trade today that is to your customers and to your customers customers you need to start talking to them really today they have the ear to the ground and discussion with them will provide you beneficial insight for forecasting your volume of business in the short and near secondly again staying with your customers i think in times like this in crisis like this you really don't want to be doing business with traders or customers who are tardy and you know who are negative at gross margin level so hard decisions around marginal customers and also marginal products will have to be made in the context of what has already been stated before me that cash is really the supreme king it goes without saying that product and service seasonality of course everybody will consider another thing which will have to be considered is the spurt in demand the spurt in pent up demand which might occur at the middle of the year so that too will need to be considered in in forecasting uh, it was mentioned that the supply chain is broken very rightly so so sales forecast will need to adjust for those supply chain challenges your raw material supplier if if they are not ready in time obviously that's going to impact your sales also it's a good time to start identifying some spot deals with my oil industry background i know there are a lot of good spot deals going around these days overall inventory will need to be controlled and that's really the challenge here you neither want to get too ambitious and lock up your precious cash in stock 
nor do you want to become so ultra risk averse that you start seeding market share. Again, back to the main point, after all this is done, if your fixed costs are not covered, then you have to take the big decisions. And here are just a few examples, which is the fourth bullet point. Uh, essentially, every line of the PNL represents a decision to be made. Whether you want to give up some of your depots, you want to run your own logistics if that is cheaper, outsourcing your HR and finance department. These are all things I have done in my, in my working career. Renegotiating supply contracts, looking at co working options, and then of course, manpower costs. So, these are some of the illustrations, some of the areas that I think every organization will have to address. Sandeep Gupta, who's going to speak after me, will dwell in more detail on each of these line items. But uh, if I may add my, uh, my two pence on leadership here, the CEOs will really need to lead from the front since my experience is that senior managers often tend, often tend to go for low risk options. Uh, we are already finding on social media and through friends and colleagues that a lot of CEOs are already engaging with their teams remotely. And uh, while it is important and essential to have all the motivational messages go out, I think uh, management will need to have authentic, transparent and truthful communication with all their stakeholders in the very near, near future. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to share with, with some of with the background that I had. Thank you, uh, Ajay, and thank you others for giving me this opportunity to share these thoughts with you. Could you just move to the next slide, please? Uh, so Sandeep Gupta, who will be taking over from me, he was a uh, vice president finance in a pharma company handling global treasury and financial planning and analysis. Currently, he's a partner with ASA and Associates, heading accounting and business support and indirect tax. Over to you, Sandeep. Thank you, Sandeep. So this is from one Sandeep to the other. These are very difficult times. And as the Director General, Mr. Steinbrook, has very rightly pointed out, this crisis is probably the mother of all crises. It has never been seen before during our lifetime for sure. It's, it's an unprecedented crisis in the sense that it has impacted the entire world in an equal measure. It is not linked to a particular geography, it is not linked to a particular country, but it is all across. And that's what drives us to understand what is the best step, what is the best course of action that we need to do take today in order to not just preserve our businesses in the environment in India, but how to survive in this world. And cash has very rightly been pointed out, cash is certainly going to be the key. Cash is not just the king in these times and the times to come, because believe me, friends, this crisis will not go away very, very soon. It will have ripples for at least a year or more to come after the crisis has settled down. Cash is going to be very, very critical till the last day of this crisis. Next slide, please. To take you on to the working capital management and the treasury management, as Ajay had pointed out, because these are the nitty gritties, the two essential pillars on which the cash would rest upon. I would say that working capital management becomes an integral part of the strategy of the organization which needs to be drawn up. On a conceptual plane, we all know what is working capital all about. One leg of the working capital, the sales forecasting, the sales revenue front has already been covered by Sandeep Khanna in his presentation. So I will not dwell over it on too much. But the other aspects of working capital would be taken in greater detail and on a micro level discussion in the next slide. From a top level perspective, what is it that we need to do in a working capital cycle? Every industry has its own unique cycle, whether it's a 30 day churn or a 45 day churn or a 15 day churn. One thing we must understand to preserve and to generate cash and keep it with us with a very, very tight fist, we need to make this working capital cycle churn much faster which means we need our inventories to churn faster. We need our debtors realization to happen faster. We need our creditors management to go on a much uh, a slightly higher duration phase. 
every single component of the working capital which composes in your industry will need to be relooked at with a microscopic lens and understood how best to churn it more coupled with that a couple of uh, a few uh, strategic points must be kept in mind because working capital strategy in isolation will not work one thing which has to be kept in mind is the disruption due to risks in the supply chain due to maybe the shutdown or the bankruptcy or disruption of operations on a temporary or a larger scale of the vendors or your customers each of these disruptions which would happen will need you to adjust your strategy on the working capital the safety and the sanitization cost will play a very significant role at least for the next six months these are uh, costs which would not have been budgeted by any organization other than the routine sanitization costs but the level of sanitization required in the times of covid would be extremely different extremely significant coming with a high cost and these will need to be done every day when you are talking about laborers walking into your manufacturing facilities they need to be sanitized at the point of entry they need to be worked upon during the uh, manufacturing process and when they are leaving for home single shift or partial shift running in your factories will have to be relooked at there are there are a manufacturing facilities which run maybe two shifts or three shifts you will need to identify which is the right mix for you one shoe will not fit all let me warn everybody at this stage there cannot be a uniform strategy built for every organization so everybody will need to look at their individual components on an individual plane and then strategize according to the pointers which we would be discussing now contractual labor a lot of industries need contractual labor the need and the quantum of contractual labor must be reassessed next slide please now up coming on to the nitty gritties of working capital management so there are basically you know there are three uh, four major components of uh, the working capital side one i have said is the customers which is the last green uh, box which you see and the others are inventory your overhead costs and people costs vendor contracts obviously would form part of the overhead and the inventory costs so we'll take that up separately on the inventory front other than the continuous churn of the inventory and a faster churn of the inventory and uh, linked to it as sandeep kanna mentioned during his presentation that the marginal products may need to be sidelined and high margin products may need to be given the preference you will also need to understand how those high high margin products will need to be churned around based on the raw material inventory and its related supply chain and based on that one point which can be looked at in case you are import intensive also because of quality constraints or because of uh, uh, the the cost constraints that the local sourcing is a higher cost driven you could do a mathematical analysis in the sense even with a higher cost would local sourcing serve your purpose because it will churn around your inventory faster because the delivery time of the inventory is going to be far higher what are your inventory criteria in terms of holding ideal inventory this is a time where every piece will need to be looked at minutely in the in the normal times a lot of flab is built into the system on which you know normal eyes are closed they are ignored they are just taken as it is but in these times no every single piece will need to be identified and if it is not yielding benefits if it is not being churned around it is better to dispose it off and realize your cash and use it in a more fruitful manner finished goods inventory obviously goes without saying the faster you turn it around the faster you will generate your cash but how do you do that your customers would be in the same situation as you are so does that mean that maybe coming out with a strategy of offering them a discount could actually lead to realization of higher cash and a faster cash for you that will need to be understood on the overhead costs bit now there are as sandeep khanna was saying every pnl item needs to be relooked at i agree to that but then there are certain costs which are more built in from an administrative overhead perspective and there are certain costs which are built in as a sales and a distribution cost these are the two big costs i would say would need a microscopic look travel as it is the last uh, 21 days has shown us that businesses will not come to a stop if travel stops i mean obviously uh, on a on a different note it's it's extremely bad for the airline companies 
to be in this situation they are on the verge of bankruptcy they are on the verge of shutting down but having said that the travel costs within your own organization is it necessary or is it desirable will need to be benchmarked it is not necessary for a travel to be undertaken in order to close a contract we have learned that the very fact that we are sitting all across the world probably or maybe all across india all the members who are there on this webinar and attending this shows that technology can actually get us to meet actually get us to decide and take decisions without actually going and having a physical meetings on the sales and distribution costs you have to relook at what are the components in terms of advertising in terms of promotional schemes uh, without with, with due respect to the marketing people uh, around we are very quick to come out with promotional schemes in order to leverage sales but i am reminded of a very cliched saying that revenue is vanity profit is sanity and cash is king and as i said cash will be critical so have a relook at all your promotional activities which were in the annual which are being planned and look at the cost benefit analysis of it and then plan accordingly whether it needs to be taken care of it or not on the rental costs it's been talked about i mean we have been uh, reading in the newspapers pvr has said they will not be paying rent for the first 3 months uh, the bigger malls are saying that they would not be paying rent to the lease holders now uh, sandeep also mentioned can co working be an option we have seen working from home on the service sector that technology has been extremely helpful in terms of leveraging these how do you cut down rentals we know a lot of companies have negotiated with their lease holders in terms of either 50% cut for the first 3 months or any number which is mutually amicably settled between them but this is certainly something which you will need to uh, need to look at and not ignore on the vendor contracts the renegotiation goes without saying the renegotiation has to happen with everything not just the force majeure which you would have been reading about but also in terms of the credit terms in terms of probably giving them a leverage of slight higher interest for the delayed payments to support them because you cannot afford to disrupt a vendor and affect your supply chain it would not make any commercial sense it would it would stop your production in the process so don't do that but relook at how you can best support them in these times at the same point of time how you can cut down your costs or churn your cap your working capital in a faster way by renegotiation of the contract in case it permits price renegotiation in these difficult times would certainly be also something on the uh, negotiation table people costs now it was uh, the first and foremost thought for everybody was that unemployment is going to be generated yes in certain sectors it is going to be so it unfortunately the government may or may not be able to support at the full level of policies to to stick around but yes but having said that what should be done in these circumstances is probably have a graded approach what is the first things first so maybe freeze your hirings defer your promotions defer increments if not freeze it for the whole year and then you look at how do you how do you optimize the salary cost in terms of giving a, a base wage to the employees maybe putting the redundant employees on the bench and only giving them a substance subsistence allowance to make their ends meet but certainly not lay off i think this was one of the point with mr graf also mentioned do not lay off people are assets people have stood with you all these times so lay off should be one of the last recourse but having said that deferrals of bonuses deferrals of incentives uh, promotions these certainly must be looked at next slide please on the treasury management front the treasury has will have a very important role to play here first and foremost the role of the treasury in any organization is cash flow planning how do you do that in these times the normal cash flow planning will not work so my recommendation is come out with a rolling 30 day plan every 30 day you roll it every 30 day you roll it and then you have a 6 month cash plan and a longer one year term plan of course based on the 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 kind of developments on the vaccine front yes uh, you will need to defer it longer or maybe cut it down but only time will tell but certainly a rolling plan will help along with the rolling plan what you must identify is what is your cash burn position each month you will not be working capital positive not every industry can be that it is just not possible so how do you 
identify those cash burn gaps and your strategize to fill those cash burn situations will be the key in order for you to survive in the coming months you could look at a higher leverage in the short to medium term leveraging is certainly not very healthy for any for any industry in the longer run beyond a certain ratio but yes these are difficult times these are exceptional circumstances and i would say exceptional nature of solutions will also need to be thought of cash pooling across the entities could be a very good idea to relook at where there could be certain surplus cash sitting in an entity of the group whereas another entity a different entity is starving legally within the framework of regulations how best you can cash pool is there a possibility that you can give uh, group guarantees in order to generate more uh, funding from the from the lenders those are the kind of things we should be looking at and obviously monetizing all your idle and low utilization assets you know you really may need to make your assets sweat at this point of time nothing should be left just sitting on the bench and not giving you roi next slide on the specific side it's very easy to say generate uh, more funding through going to your lenders yes that's one of the easiest things than done but then please understand increasing your existing lines of credit will be possible only to a very marginal extent i do believe certain bankers are calling up their customers and saying we are prepared to extend to you 10% additional lines of credit without any extra security or any paperwork certainly seize those calls do not let those calls go away but they are only 10% in case you need more you should look at alternative options is there a possibility that your parent company can help you out with either equity or convertible instruments at this point of time is it possible that they can send you over cash through working capital ecbs those are now permitted under the indian fema regulations look at everything do not discard any option which in the hither to before world was not thought of bill discounting and factoring lines are obviously part of the credit facility and these should be harder negotiated with the bankers or with the lenders how you can churn your bills faster the peer to peer lending sector has come up in the last two years uh, in india in a big way however these are for very small levels of financing maybe a few crores of rupees but then why not if this helps you with a few crores in the short run why not look at that capex will need to be put on hold or deferred based on again the sales projection the sales strategy which is built up i would say in case capex was into a wip stage and the sales product projections do not support your uh, finishing of the capex even after deferment monetize your wip sell it off you will have enough and more time to rebuild in the future but if you do not have cash now difficult times are certainly going to wipe you out from there the government policies are coming out uh, packages are coming out worldwide every government is coming out india also has come out with a few packages deferred tax payment are a scheme rbi has come out with moratoriums uh, in this regard take use of those moratoriums only if you find that the extra leverage which it results into is not going to break your back after 2 years because moratoriums do have a, a habit of you know turning nasty at the end of the period it results into a higher uh, interest cost hedging policies wherever you are dealing with cross border transactions where you have imports or you have exports you must look at your currency hedging currencies will be very very volatile in the future euro will be volatile dollar will be volatile we are already seeing it pound we really don't know where it will end up do not take a call off doing a simple forward go in with a detailed discussion with your relationship managers with the bankers fix up your hedging lines and understand the market there will be a huge saving you can give to your organization in terms of forex hedging tax financing is something which could be a potential way but be very very wary wherever you are deferring uh, payments of tax in the due dates do not invite prosecutions but wherever there are interest costs understand the leveraging and be happy to pay that interest and defer your tax payments for a little while but i am warning do not invite prosecutions in this so any clause which says prosecution is possible do not go in for that next slide please on the digital vision i would not be dwelling upon too much uh, in the paucity of time just two things i would like to say here that automate whatever little you can which will bring in cost savings and efficiencies without involving a lot of expenditure at this point of time try build in predictive tools using data analytics data uh, the Uh, machine learning tools 
because that is going to what is going to help you in terms of achieving your sales forecast and making your sales strategies more accurate and succinct and built with all this you will need to be very careful about the cyber security and threats because those would be the the everyday phenomenon in the digital world next slide please on the government policies government will keep on coming out with changes be very careful uh, in terms of understanding those changes in terms of keeping abreast with those changes it will be very critical to keep in touch with very good consultants around you and more importantly my recommendation would be be in very close contact with igcc your own very trade chamber because any kind of a representation done through a trade chamber through igcc is going to probably give you better results in terms of policy making by the government or in terms of extending benefits to your individual sector next slide please and in terms of all this how do you monitor and manage all this you will need a core team a, a crisis management team as you could call it or give it any other fancy name but you will need a team which should comprise of the four critical stakeholders of any organization the cfo the for the finance function the sales head or the marketing head the procurement head and your hr head for your people all these people must be meeting daily every day assessing reassessing re-strategizing the situation on a daily basis and then as and how the situation start uh, you know probably coming more within the grips you could turn those meetings into a weekly meeting or a periodic meeting which suits your need but do not let it happen simply uh, on on the people down below on the managers line below because as it was mentioned earlier people could be conservative people could be aggressive both these situations could be disastrous for your organization you will need the key people as uh, in this in this core committee team led from the front by the ceo as was said and lastly do not wait for for any single moment now start now start today start strategizing today if you have not already because we really do not know when the cure is going to come out we really do not know what situations will evolve do not waste time in strategizing in taking care of your organization to not only generate cash but to hold cash and utilize cash with the every single rupee giving you the maximum benefit next slide please with this i would conclude my talks and i would be very happy for the question and answer session so i would hand over the mic back to mr steinrup over to you sir for the question and answer session uh, thank you very much uh, mr gupta um, i think this was a very interesting overview and uh, we have now for the beginning uh, five questions five or six questions, but I would like to start with the first question and then I would like to ask uh, Mr. Sandeep Kanna. Uh, the question is, revenue forecasting has become impossible for any company now. What is the best way to manage budget forecasting during such times? Well, yeah, <laughs> fully recognize that it's a very, very difficult task. Uh, some of this year, if you, you know, if, if the moderator could just uh, pull up my slide back again. Um, this is really the, you know, the, the sort of the best steer that you can give in, in times like these. Uh, I fully recognize it's very hard. As I mentioned, if you are in one of those red boxes, then uh, it becomes a non-issue because you're looking for funds to survive. But if you're in one of the other sectors, you need to take a call, be conservative, take a call when you think normalcy will be, will be restored. So whether the cure will be found within three months or longer and build that into your, your sales forecast. So that is, you know, that is first thing. Other, I don't want to repeat, but um, uh, to start talking to your customers right away. That's really critical. Start talking to them, the, them right away. I, I fully appreciate it. It's, it's, it's uh, in crisis like this, it's very, very hard to, uh, you know, to, to, to do a sales forecast. That's why we mentioned right up front, Ajay mentioned right up front, go conservative, be very, very conservative. Yeah, thank you very much. The second question, maybe that's for Ajay. Um, since many of our companies also on that call are SMEs, one of the question is, 
with the disrupted cash flow fixed expenses likely to prolong without revenue for three months and with depleted business volumes for at least a year. How can an, any SME survive even if they are less leveraged? The, uh, again, all tough questions, but I guess that's the whole topic about. The issue really is that when we talk about a six month cycle, we are making a best estimation that by that time things would start touching some level of normalcy. That's what is the expectation. But at the flip side, be ready for a long drawn battle because the economies of scale and coming back to Kiel may take 18 to 24 months. And those of you who are specifically supplying to companies uh, which are your final buyers and they have cut down on CapEx, they may not do so for 12 months. So you'll have a very tough situation as you go along. Starting points have been given at working capital cuts and we have been talking about uh, treasury management. Uh, they could down the road be the whole issue you might be facing of actually laying off people. So like I said, there are no easy answers here, but watch and take systematic steps. Don't rush into it. Thank, Thank you. you. Then the next question for Sandeep, uh, Mr. Gupta. Uh, Options available for recovering overdue payments from customers and distributors. What's your recommendation? Well, uh, the first thought would be to try and convince them because you would be in an as difficult a situation as they would be. I would say do not prefer the legal recourse as the first option. Sit on the table, understand their difficulties and see what could be a potential time frame within which they would be able to give you your your receivables in a comfortable way having said that do assess their business at the same point of time do not keep on repeating the cycle of extension extension and more extension in case you with your analysis feel that their business is in uh, let's say a deeper trouble and would probably not be giving you the uh, the realization in the near future you will have to take a call there Okay, then another question for Ajay. Should the existing reserves be used now to accelerate R&D innovation in this time of crisis? This is one of the very interesting questions which three of us were talking about at length when we were building up the strategies. Uh, ideally, any sort of uh, new product launches, any sorts of R&D which can be deferred should be deferred unless it's the integral part of your dependency on product creation. But if it is not, and survival is the thing which is looking into your face, which means you're sitting in the yellow side or the red side, I would say if you can, defer it. Okay, uh, then uh, maybe the next question, then it would be again to uh, Sandeep Gupta, and that is, um, if financial support is fin if financial support expected from Indian government to SMEs directly or through banks? Uh, well, uh, it would probably be through the banks. It will not be directly because it, uh, the government will have no mechanism to to probably give the incentives from the ministry to the individual industries. But at the same point of time, it will depend on the nature of benefit. Like very recently, a couple of days back, the small industrial development bank, uh, for which are for micro, small and medium enterprises, they came out with a scheme, but that was only for industries which were <coughs> relevant for the, uh, for the COVID-19 crisis. So they are actually talking about supplies related to COVID-19, which are being made to the government. So based on the relaxation will come in, you could see uh, a lot of banks being pulled into this uh, incentivization scheme or any sectoral specific schemes which may come in could be through the uh, downstream ministries uh, of the central government. Yeah, thank you very much. Another question also with regard to SMEs, what are the tools for generating more liquidity? That's also for you, Sandeep maybe some of the hidden hidden treasures <laughs> well as i said uh, you'll have to look at the low hanging fruits first uh, so to generate liquidity look at your receivables see where you can get the money from offer them discounts look at your sales 
uh, try and get advances to the extent possible from your customers and of course on the flip side where you can extend the credit period and the repayment to your vendors those could be there but coming on to your internal organization i think every expense will need a complete relook you know this is the time to cut flab if you ever wanted your organization to be lean and mean this is the time to do it and probably you will not find a dissenting voice in the entire board of directors why a particular expense is needed and this would be probably give you the immediate amount of liquidity from your own internal expense cut downs travel costs rental costs those are the few ones i talked about you will find enough and more happening on the salaries front also i mean from a socialistic perspective yes it is not good to lay off but then every organization has the flap sitting on the bench and uh, if i may just share with you an anecdote i was speaking to the cfo of uh, a multinational pharma company and he was saying on the light away he is also using this opportunity to cut out those people which were unwanted in the organization and well salaries would be safe to that extent but then to generate liquidity uh, enough and more uh, avenues you could find internally on your pnl itself okay then another question to ajay um, any inputs on the hedging on hedging the rupee against the euro for better liquidity management i think i better give this question to sandeep gupta also <laughs> because it's his specialization <laughs> but i would certainly say i would certainly add one thing that you'll be surprised that we have already done it for some of our clients that even for your simple activity of moving of goods from india outside or from outside to india and using different bankers can have so much variance that you'll be surprised but sandeep you may want to add that nugget which he's looking for now what you are saying is absolutely right ajay because see hedging in these volatile times is going to be an extremely critical task so all these banks do have highly advanced scientific models on the basis of which currencies are projected in the future but the uncertainty of these times will you know keep on changing the projections what could be a very very good idea was based on your business model my recommendation would be go in for short term hedging strategies do not go in for a long term hedging strategy and lock your rate for the entire one year or a two year period that will not work go in for a for a you could say a, a, a floating kind of a hedging risk uh, based on terms of your uh, the organizational appetite risk appetite whether you would like to do complex structures or not in terms of derivatives would be individual call okay the next question is um, to sandeep kanna and that's about his three boxes and the question is um, in which box does education industry and it industry fall <laughs> <laughs> well really hard to say you know because education industry also has uh, different models similarly it industry has uh, has uh, different models uh, but i think uh, given that both education and it are so essential they are definitely not in the red box was that the answer for both yes okay fine okay then we have two questions uh, to igcc and therefore i would like to take this and uh, uh, i would like to take the second one first can you share the action taken by the german government for handling this situation with regard to smes there now in germany indeed the government has come up with a wide range of um, uh, packages um, and one is for really small companies that only have one to um, five people and there you can apply for an immediate cash grant of 9000 euros just to cover your uh, liquidity and if you have up to 10 people it's 15000 euros this is a very simple program uh, that the german government has introduced uh, you can answer the question on one piece of paper um, and uh, the payment is very fast and with that the government just tries to basically help the very small companies then there is a, another scheme for uh, middle-sized companies and there we have a loan scheme and you can get a loan 
uh, which will be guaranteed by the government up to 90%. And this loan is up to 800,000 euros. And that is for working capital requirements as well as for investments. Um, and then for the bigger SMEs com companies, and you know in Germany SMEs, they uh, have very often more than 250 people, uh, and some of them are really global players. For that, we have even larger loans. And then finally, there is a sort of umbrella um, where big companies like TUI, for instance, or Lufthansa, they are getting huge loans uh, by KFW. And um, there is even a consideration whether the government should become a shareholder in companies like that. But the prime objective is to keep the companies running. And finally, also in Germany, we have a sort of chapter 11, which is a new insolvency law. And one of the first companies or groups that has used this is Karstadt Kaufhof. And there, basically, it's a sort of moratorium that can help you to survive the next couple of months. But the most important um, system in Germany is the so-called Kurzarbeitergeld, which basically is money that the government gives you so that when your staff is not able to work because lack of business, the government pays the salary and you only pay the salary when your staff is working. We have cases of big companies in Germany um, where business is basically down to zero, where the staff is only working 20%, meaning they only come to office one day a week. And their 80% of the salary is being paid by the government so that the staff is not being sacked. And this is something which has helped Germany already during the financial crisis, but is helping Germany now also in a big way. Now, what is the relevance for German companies in India? The relevance is that your parent company in Germany is strongly supported by the German government. And this, of course, will also help your operation here in India. Because when your company in Germany, that of course is also in big troubles, trouble, is supported in Germany, is stabilized in Germany, this of course will also help you over here. So indirectly, you are also a beneficiary of this German support system. And it is critical that you discuss and interact with your management in Germany, how they can support you here in India, while they are being supported in Germany. That, of course, is very individual. But if there are any specific questions from your side, also directly to us, of course, you can always contact my colleagues or me. Now, at the moment, it is 3.02. We are two minutes over the time. But I was told that we can extend a little bit. And therefore, I would just uh want to refer to maybe two or three more questions and one question is um basically on the economies in the various countries and how do you rate the recovery in india china japan germany and the us um and uh, since ajay in the beginning mentioned that he has clients all over the world and in all these countries, maybe you can take that question. Thank you, Mr. Steinbrook. I think uh, if you look at the way the graph has proceeded uh, earlier also, we have seen South Korea and of course Taiwan do a tremendous job in Asia. And then of course we have seen South Korea having uh, uh, relapsed cases. And then we have looked into the other side, we saw Japan, which shows on the same model as Germany not to go for a lockdown. And suddenly they are having the same number of cases as India. They, we are sitting at 6,000 cases, both of us. And then you look at uh, US, which has chosen not to bother about the entire thing at all. And uh, let's see what happens. And they are taking it, let's say, a bit of a cowboy approach on the whole thing. And then we have UK, which first decided not to do a lockdown and is now talking that they may go for a kind of a 
partial lockdown situation all the way till the time of vaccine comes out. So different people are taking very different positions on this matter. I think the only way it will converge, and I can assure you that uh, econ economies ultimately do take over, and we have seen it even in the time of the depression. Ultimately, everybody will start looking at the business side of it. I do expect a lot of businesses to get internalized. They will, this globalization period, I think, uh, with this coronavirus scare, globalization as the way we knew it and the way we learned about it and all the books we read is more or less going to come to an end. There's going to be a lot of internalization at various places. There's going to be hedging of risk instead of putting everything at a, a single location. So I do expect changes. So therefore, in conclusion, I would say, I do expect Asia to move out faster because Asian middle class demand is still very high. But I equally expect big businesses to create industries within their uh, jurisdiction. Let's say German companies or French companies will start taking a lot of supplies within the country itself in order to beat the risk of having to depend outside. That's my long answer to the whole thing. OK, so I think we are now coming to the end. And I'm supposed to do the closing remarks. Um, I was given five minutes. I'm not sure whether I will take all these five minutes. But I think, for me, it was a very interesting session. I have learned a lot. And I understand that also uh, the treasurer of IGCC is on the call. So hopefully, he has also learned something. And now I will discuss with him where we have our hidden treasures in the chamber. At the beginning of the session, Georg Graf has said, we have to increase speed. We have to get the right data to the decision makers. And we've also learned during the session that it is important to much faster churn out working capital cycles and to basically make sure that whatever liquidity is there is activated as fast as possible. So when we on the one hand think with all the lockdown, things are slow, it seems we have to make sure things get faster. If this is the mother of all crises, and when we compare that to other crises of that magnitude, it is quite intriguing to see. The coronavirus is a war without weapons, an earthquake without quake, a typhoon without wind, and a tsunami without water. What I want to say with this is that basically, different to these catastrophes, there is no physical infrastructure disaster, no infrastructure damage. So different to a war or a tsunami or another physical crisis, we do not have to rebuild the whole country after the end of this disruption. And this, to a certain extent, is promising. Because once that coronavirus is over, we will be able, maybe not to get back to normal, because many companies, well, may, will go bankrupt, but their infrastructure physically is still there. So from that angle, we will be better off than in other disasters we have seen in the past. And therefore, I think it is important that we use this crisis also as an opportunity, do the things that we could not do when the markets were booming, but also think about ways that we've been operating or working. Traveling was already mentioned, but even other activities where we now see, oh, it is also possible to work and live without them. And one big learning certainly is working from home that we're all doing here. But one learning will also be look at Delhi or other parts in India or in the world, how suddenly the air has improved dramatically, how suddenly the topic of global warming has sort of taken a backseat. And these things are changing for the better. So therefore, we have to use this crisis as an opportunity and make the best out of it. It is certainly a huge challenge for everybody. On the other hand, I have to say, 
many, many in this world have seen crises, be it the refugee crisis, be it the crises in Africa, be it crises in other places, and they've also survived it. And from that angle, we will also survive this challenge. Uh, we have to take it, as I mentioned, as an opportunity. And if ASA and Associates, if Indo-German Chamber of Commerce and many of our partners can be of assistance, we are only too happy to help, to be there for our members, our friends. And I think this was an interesting session. The presentation will be online, I understand, in another two hours. If you have any questions, please send us mails or please call us. We will try to help you in these difficult times. Those are times, challenging times, but we will manage. Thank you very much.